So down in the comments, uh, leave your own paranormal story. Yeah. There you go. We'll see how that goes. How many of our viewers actually have paranormal <laughs> encounters and stuff like that? Hey, y'all, Billy from Permapastures Farm. Are you new to homesteading? Did you go out there and get a bunch of animals? Let's say you got a bunch of chickens, or let's just say you have too many. You've hatched them out, you have whatever the case may be. And they're becoming, instead of them being a net asset to your land, they're becoming something of a liability. Okay, well we're approaching that right now. We got this flock and there's about 32 birds in there. And we got them within this poultry netting. And they're essentially, we don't have them in the chicken tractor on steroids. We have them basically three days behind the sheep. There's a whole variety of reasons why that's happening. The chief being that they break up the pest cycle and uh, they're eating up a lot of the things that are no good. But what we've noticed is that we probably are about 10 birds too heavy. So what are we going to do about it? In most cases, people are just going to deal with it. But it's to the case where some of these guys, like let's take a look over here. This is what they're doing because we have too many birds in too small an area. Now, if you think that's not a problem, I'm gonna walk over here and everything you see up this hill, from here, that pile is something we had to clear. This entire mess of a forest that we're turning into a silver pasture area was jacked up from the feed up because of the previous homesteaders that lived on this property. Now, I've said it before, and this might offend some people, but it is what it is. Homesteaders can either be the best thing that ever happened to the soil or the worst and i gotta be perfectly honest here in most cases we're the worst because we're either getting too many animals um maybe we're not ready to move on to the next ones or we're in a position where we let things get a little bit too heavy and we've become attached to those animals and we don't want to get rid of them look y'all at the end of the day i love you dearly you lay eggs but you got to go if you ain't working out like this one here is injured has issues whole variety of reasons why it needs to go in the freezer. You're gonna to have to be a little bit dispassionate about the animals you have and take the necessary steps. Well, the steps we're gonna do, we, we really got two choices. We could take them, put them in the freezer, which isn't the best idea in the world for us because every one of our freezers are bursting with too much right now. And we got more coming. And over here, we have in here a bunch of birds that can be a net blessing to someone we know kicking this thing off and you're going to meet them today you're going to be glad you did so with that said we're going to while it's still early we could have done this last night but we didn't want to make them too uncomfortable for the two hour trip that they're about to make so we're snatching them out this morning and they're going to get a new home what, i think what, well what I, we're going to take a rooster um go ahead and grab one of them roosters Oh, was... Hang on, son. Hold this for me so I can snatch one in. <laughs> yeah, I'll get it. Right behind you. Come on, get up in. For those of you that don't know, mom's the best chicken wrangler ever. My, ever. my only talent. That's not true. <laughs> that one right there. Which one? Well, whatever it is, it needs to be black. Get that one in front of you, Michelle. No, in the box. Billy. Mom's like a king cobra. She just snatches them up. What's the benefit of the black one, Dad? Well, part of it is these guys create the impression that you got crows down there. So birds of prey are less likely. We, we find birds of prey all over flying over, but they don't ever attack unless, I mean, the only time we really have any concerns is when we're hatching out chicks. But typically when they see black birds in there, they think crows. And since when we do that chicken tractor on steroids, we actually court the crows. Yeah, birds of prey are really not a problem around here. Well, these gals and guys are loaded up, ready to, for their new home. Now, let's go right back to Bill Mullison, Permaculture 101. The problem is the solution. We got a problem of having too many birds right now. So the solution is to bless someone else who could use them. Or we could put them in the freezer and give the meat away. Any number of ideas and ways we can go about this. 
All right, before they hit the road, I want to remind you, remember, at the end of this week, butchery, pig butchery, 101 is going to be one of two times we're only doing it for probably for the rest of the year. So details down below. With that said, William's going to get on the first thing smoking over to go see Tony. All right, so we made it all the way out to Tony's place. Um, and if anybody was wondering, that trip uh, was definitely funky with the car, with the chickens in the back of the car. If you can at all help it, use a truck if you're transporting chickens. But Tony, this is your first That's batch of chickens. Are you excited? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm real excited. Yeah. We got the uh, chicken coop built over here. I've had it built for a while. And uh, now we got the chickens to put it in, so I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, we have our pigs over here that we got uh, not too long ago. How long ago was it, William? Probably a couple years ago? Or not? Couple, no, a couple, couple, couple Yeah, months I think ago? it was about like two or three months ago. Yeah. There we go. Here they are. Yeah, so uh, pig one and pig two, but my wife calls them Hamlet and Princess Peach because my son named it Princess Peach because he's into Mario. And uh, William told me that they're getting a little porky for their yeah. age. So yeah, they're a little chubby. I'm gonna back off on the feed. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we we run the uh, the electric fence with a Gallagher charger, solar charger. It's been doing the trick for us. So uh, we're gonna keep it going that way. Um, that's their second shelter. The first one broke during a storm, and I uh, was out of town at the time. So my wife actually built that shelter. That's not and, bad. Uh, it's it's working. So we'll, we might we might switch it up here in the future. But right now, this is their area. They like it, uh, but they're really really lazy, and I think it's because I'm feeding them too much now. So for sure. Uh, <laughs> what are you feeding them? So how are you guys feeding them? Yeah, You're so, not buying them just the pellets, right? No, uh, we have pellets for weekends because we worked out a deal with a local daycare where they give us the leftovers of all the slop from the kids food and so every day i stop by the daycare and i get a big bag of of uh leftover food from the daycare for the from the kids i bring it down here and i dump it down there and they go to town on it but apparently i'm feeding them too much of that and they're <laughs> I've noticed they're just kind of like, bleh. And I yeah. think that's probably why. <laughs> I think they might be a little lazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I got a shed slash workshop going on over here. Yeah, so uh, they're building the shed over here. And uh, it's almost done, actually, it looks like. But it's a 12 by 20 shed. And I needed it for all the outdoor equipment that I have. And also, we'll be able to put the feed in there for the chickens, the pigs, and keep all that stuff in there and out of my garage. Uh, but it's gonna be a great storage facility for all, all the outdoor stuff and also a place to process pigs when it's time because uh, You know it'd be good to have a spot to do that in uh, Then just out in the open because we we live in a nice little cutoff spot from our neighborhood But we are in a neighborhood. So yeah, they are in like a Subdivision, yeah, right? Subdivision. Yeah, it's a subdivision um, But I think it's safe to say you're a full-blown homesteader Tony Farmer Tony, Tennessee Tony. Here we so are. So we had a couple chickens get out in the process, but we got them back in. Yeah. Oh man. Um, and now here's their new paddock. We just set up their new chicken fence around their coop right here. Um, so I guess the plan, Tony, is to move them behind your pigs over there. Yeah. Yeah. In the process. Once okay. We move the pigs down further. We'll move them down further. Give them a new area. And uh, we'll kind of just rotate the pigs and chickens back and forth. You're a full-blown farmer. You got a grazing rotation and everything on your suburban that's, lot. That's right. That's, right. <laughs> that's awesome. How much land do you have here? Uh, 1.2 acres. So you have two pigs, 10 chickens, or nine hens and a rooster. So you can make however many chickens you wanted to. I know. I wasn't expecting the, the rooster, so this is good. I'm yeah. Hoping I don't have to worry about the chickens anymore. I got a I, I, never-ending flow. So some people haven't seen the video before that we did, the first video we did where we did that irrigation over there on your property. Yeah. So for those that haven't seen you, what what is it that you do and what did you just get done doing basically? <laughs> I run a media company called Merkel Media. Uh, I started out as a podcaster, driving tractor trailer and podcasting and it became my full-time job. And now I'm building Merkel Media where we do films and we host other podcasts and things like that. Uh, we did our first film was called Exhibition Dog Man. It can be found on Apple TV, 
I think Apple TV. I know they bought it, so it's either going to be now or soon available. Uh, but Amazon, Tubi, uh, Merkle Dot Media on demand. And Exodus Dogman was, we went to Kentucky hunting down this legendary creature called the Dogman based off of episode 335 of the Confessionals podcast. And um, we did that film, it hit really well. And so we did another one, which we're coming out with in the early summer called The Shape of Shadows, where we went to Skinwalker Ranch in Utah and spent a week out there on the border of the ranch doing our own investigations. We got UFOs on camera, we got uh, a lot of crazy stuff. So excited about that coming out. And then we, um, just about two weeks ago, we were out in Washington doing a Bigfoot film. And uh, we went to the encounter location of a legendary experience. Uh, Wes Germer from Sasquatch Chronicles, he uh, and his brother one night ran into three of these things in their vehicle. And it was, a, I think it was like a three hour ordeal. It was a long period of time they were up there dealing with these things. And, uh, or maybe, maybe, you have to listen to it. Oh, yeah, to listen to it. <laughs> Episode 52 of the Confessionals podcast, you can hear that, that encounter. But we went there, did an investigation, and uh, we, we had some things pop up on camera as far as, like, orbs go. Uh, we also got growled at by something, me and my partner, Joel. It felt like it was right there on our shoulder. We turned around, nothing was there, but it was a deep guttural growl. And Wes had that very same experience when he was up there as well. Uh, and we also uh, ran into a missing person case about 150 yards from the encounter location we found a van a bunch of weed was outside the van uh looked like the guy was setting up camp for a while and we were up there during the day we came back at night nothing was touched the weed was still sitting out nobody leaves the weed out that long we went back two or three days later everything was still untouched we reported it and we went and talked about it on when i when i when the trip was over i went on wes's show and uh, we were talking about the trip and we brought this up. Well, it turns out the family of that missing person heard that episode and they knew that his vehicle was in that area then because they didn't know where he was. Um, and the, the sheriff's department put out a missing person report of him. Now they have the vehicle in possession, but they have no idea where he's at. And uh, I talked to somebody, his ex fiance last week, and uh, it seems like she's not very hopeful that he is anywhere to be found. They just want answers to kind of have closure. So um, that happened about 150 feet away, 150 yards away from Wes's encounter. And what's weird is that the night we, the, the, the last night we went out there and we found the vehicle still, we were at Wes's studio. And I asked him during our interview, I said, do you think if you and your brother weren't in a vehicle, you would still be here? And he said, no. And then we went out there and found that vehicle still there and everything untouched. So it makes you wonder what happened. I don't want to say it was Bigfoot, but uh, if you're familiar with the Missing 411 series with David Pilates, it has a lot of those vibes. So wow. uh, very interesting uh, trip we had. Uh, we had some interesting things happen, we, and we went all over the place. Uh, so, yeah, look forward to that. Probably, I'd say around Christmas time this year will be coming out. Wow. Okay, so the chickens are dropped off. Um, right now we're headed over to Rural King which is like the Tennessee virgin of tractor supply, I think. Just realized I look like a homeless person uh, with this beard. I need to shave. I need to shave all of this off. But anyway, some of you might be wondering, like, why are you getting rid of them or why are you giving them away instead of uh, processing them? Um, a, that's a lot of equipment to break out, so just to process 10 birds. Um, and also, we know people that are getting into homesteading, so they might be better served to... Um, you know, to kickstart another homestead or to jumpstart another homestead instead of just putting them in the freezer because they're all pretty young birds. Uh, we just have too many of them for what, we, what we're doing with them right now. Um, so Tony's getting one of the Bielfelder roosters and then also nine uh, laying hens. Um, like I said, he's already got the, or like he said before, he's already got those two pigs over there and he's doing this on one point something acres. It's not very much at all. Um, and he's doing it in a suburban lot in Tennessee. Also, just a little pro tip for anybody who has to transport chickens in a car or a hatchback, like this is, a um, little Subaru hatchback, if you ever have to transport chickens in this and you're doing it in a dog crate, there is a fine line between the windows being too open and not open enough. So you want airflow so you're not huffing, you know, chicken poop. 
but you don't want so much airflow that is blowing the chicken poop and making it like <laughs> go everywhere. So, hey, Tony. Hey, y'all. So now we're at Rural King picking up supplies. Yeah. Why are you getting into this? Is a complete opposite yeah, lifestyle yeah. of how you grew up, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So why are you getting into homesteading? Uh, because the store shelves are consistently empty over the last couple of years. Every few months, they're talking about shortages and something. And I got a wife and two kids that I need to feed. So we're gonna take care of ourselves and not worry about the store taking care of us. And so we got our meat, we got our proteins, we got our garden going. And it's not, you know, I wouldn't say it's the biggest farm in the world, but it's <laughs> ours and it feeds my family. And so that's why we're doing it. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. And you just came out with an app, didn't you? Yeah. So what's all that about? The Confessionals uh, app. The Confessionals app for members it. only. Okay. Uh, it's a members only app, but people can listen to all the episodes on there if they're members, public and member shows, and communicate through the chat community. There's a whole community there, people chatting back and forth about whatever they want to talk about. So That's awesome. Yeah, if you're a member, go ahead and check it out. So down in the comments, uh, leave your own paranormal story. There you go. See how that goes. How many of our viewers actually have paranormal encounters and stuff like that? All right, y'all. So Tony squared away. He got all the supplies for the chickens. Um, he went back to his house to get the chickens squared away. And then I went over to his office space to switch out this plug for him. Uh, it was an interesting plug. It had like a switch up top and then a plug on bottom. But anyway, he had uh, like a sign mounted there for it. Um, so that's squared away. Now, I want to show you guys the best store on planet earth. This is the best store ever, you'll see. All right, y'all, we are at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. This is the best store on earth. And you might be wondering, that's an odd, you know, odd stop to make on the way back home, but, sorry y'all, I thought I had to sneeze for a second. My allergies have been killing me. Um, now, you might be thinking that's an odd stop to make on the way back home, well, I'm actually here for a specific reason. I'm picking up a knife for the knife giveaway, actually maybe a couple knives for the knife giveaway on the Permaculture Pimp Cast. If you want to learn how to apply for this knife giveaway, listen to yesterday's episode, episode 87 on the Permaculture Pimp Cast. It's linked down below. Listen to the episode, learn how you can apply to acquire one of the knives from the knife giveaway. Now, I will say one of the knives is the perfect homesteading knife. It is the absolute, like quintessential, perfect homesteading knife. If you are a homesteader, you should have one of these knives, and if you don't, then you definitely need to apply for the knife giveaway. It'll be shown on the uh, YouTube video version of episode 87. I'll go through and um, show you the knives that I got, give you the specs and all that stuff. So until next time, oh yeah, don't forget to check out the website. Uh, Check out the Comfrey. We got Comfrey Sav. We got the Comfrey Root Cuttings for sale. We got the uh, Bone Sauce, the world's best deer repellent. Some would say the only deer repellent that actually works. Until next time, uh, we'll see you. Thanks for watching.